Hello everyone, welcome to a, another video on the channel here. Um, it has been three weeks since any video, and I don't have any proper good excuses. Um, I was out of school. Uh, yeah, I was already out of school, like five weeks ago. And then my sister came into town shortly after for the holidays like Christmas New Year's so I was busy with all that spending time with the family so I I should have come back the first week of January I did not and I had painting going on for a week and then snowed in for like four days almost it's kind of snowed in where I live it we don't get snow, so it was like everything shut down. Um, I should have made some videos, but I was busy. I got back into Baldur's Gate 3, and I played too much Baldur's Gate 3, and I started up some new uh, YouTube series on, uh, on one of my favorite channels. Um, but th for this video, I kind of wanted to... Talk about um, one of my favorite hobbies I like doing in my free time. Uh, I always kind of think about it, get ideas for it, and that is actually D and D. And for the last year and a half, I've been making my own world. I wonder if I can find some of my old maps I made. I know this is one. I have a bunch somewhere. Let me open up my map making program too, since I'm right here. And I've been kind of hesitant on uploading anything because my biggest fear is someone else is going to take it and then I don't get any credit and whatnot, but. I legit have so much data proving that I did it way before they did if they were to take anything. Um, yes, let's. This is Incarnate. I highly recommend it. There is a free version, but I do have like the upgraded version. And, well, before we begin, um, one of. What got me, I wanted to talk about what kind of got me into D&D. And I've always played video games growing up. And then, actually it was my high school prom. Uh, I went out, I went with some friends. And uh, at one of our houses, we were playing board games. And it was there where I started really getting into board games. And the ones we played there was... Um, a trail at House on the Hill, which is my favorite board game now, funny enough. But then there was also Secret Hitler we played and uh, the Sheriff of, no of Nottingham, I believe it's called. Um, but those We played those there, and ever since then, I love board games. And I actually started to watch board game YouTubers. And... Over the few months of watching, I kind of got more into uh, the board game side of YouTube. Also came up D&D videos, and I started watching some of those, and I fell in love with it. So then, like any any smart GM or DM, however you, whichever one you say, um, I, prefer, I prefer DM, Dungeon Master, um, as we can see right here. Um, but yeah, that it was just something I really got passionate about and wanted to create my own world. But instead of starting small with any modules, like I have all of them now, basically, like um, The Wild Beyond the Witch Light, first one I could read from a distance. Instead of starting with one of the pre mates, I was like, you know what? I'm going to make my own, do my own campaign, my own world, my own cities, my own everything. And I'm still on that journey of building. The entire world but i've 
I'm really happy with all the progress and all that. So, uh, this was the first map I ever made. And I was very proud of this map until I went on to the Incarnate Reddit and saw how good I, it could have been. But I, I believe these are all um, the free assets, the core ones right here. There's so many. I, I do highly recommend getting the uh, deluxe one, whatever. Um, but no, this was my very first map I ever made. And I called it the Twin Crescents because it kind of looked Crescent-y. And I just placed some settlements where I kind of wanted them. Ruins, mountains, boats, forts. And I was really happy with this. And then I was like, you know what? This is going to be my world. And I even went to the point of making regions like sea routes and land routes. Why I didn't put them on the same one, I don't know. But like, here's the sea routes. And I forget. Yeah, I, I don't know what these names are. I don't know what PH5 are. PH5 is. I don't know what those are anymore. Um, and I don't know where I got these names. I do use name generators because I I am not going to... Once we see the other maps, I am not going to sit down and name so much stuff on my own. Um, but that was my very first map. And then I believe... These are out of order from changing stuff and everything. Um, I made a island. I, I took my old map, that the Twin Crescents map, and turned it into this map. I just added some more landmass and kind of changed things around. And I still really do like this map. And I think these are like this to be labeled in the future, I think. I don't know. Um, but for this map, I do and will plan on putting it in my world. Uh, it's called the Dreaded Hollow. If we open up... A little bit of a spoiler here. Uh, this is my current world map. Um, I do have the Dreaded Hollow right here. So it is it'll, it is going to be a part of my world, but um, it might change a little bit. But I have it here. And like I don't know what scale I'm thinking for these hexes here. Um, and I don't have any information anywhere for that. That's what I did with that map. I have various sewer maps. Uh, this is a Silent Moor sewer. We'll get to that. Uh, I, I'm not going to use it ever. Um, but then I made... I changed map styles and tried to figure out which one I want to open up. And I created the Banished Haven world or map. And I think this is supposed to be a world map i'm not quite sure i don't quite remember this was a few years ago not a few years like a no no it was a few years ago i think Maybe like two years um but i don't remember what my kind of plans were i do have like four or five different versions of the map obviously for some reason um let's let's keep this name right here in mind and this one i guess uh like different regions so i don't know what i was exactly thinking i started to plan some like manners or roots and stuff like that and i don't know how long this video is going to be uh just as a heads up we're already at the 10 minute mark almost um but yeah just planning out ideas at that time but then i i actually wrote five campaigns for the Banished Haven. Um, let me see if I can find them. I might not be able to, but I have them printed out behind me somewhere. No, I, I had four. Um, it was King's Champion. There was like another one. I can't remember. It was, I can't remember them. Um, but then I decided to go back to the other map style which is the current style i like 
is it was like the paper map and like the realistic map style. And this is the realistic one right here. And this was my very first map of my current, not my current, this was supposed to be a world map, but, um, and I, I still think it looks really great as a world map, but at the time I was watching Game of Thrones and I wanted, because in the very first episode from, uh, I'm trying to remember Game of Thrones now, from King's Landing to wherever the Starks live in the first one, is it White Run? I don't know. But that was like, I, I looked it up like two, three times building this map. And it was uh, like a few months journey. So I wanted to go, I wanted this to be like King's Landing, quote unquote. And right here be right one, or White Run, for example. So I wanted this right here to be like a month's journey. But just looking at it, and this was before I knew any scaling or anything like that. These are all trees. These all these dots are trees. And these are mountains. So I I've changed my mind. I during this whole process, I've changed my mind so many times. It is not even funny. Um but this was I, I changed it to one continent. Content. I struggle saying this word for some reason. And I changed the name to Corsa from. I, I just took that name from uh, one of my one of the old maps. I also took Arkwell from an old map. Um, I took another one. Like I know I took this is Zara right here. Um, but so I made it into this. And I worked on my blending, I changed the mountain style, and um, just overall changed it. But it's funny enough, that's actually not my current map. This is my current map for Corsa. And I think it looks a lot better than this, because with this, the words kind of are bright. But this is a little bit more subtle. Um, so the places we ha I have seven kingdoms, quote unquote, in here. We have Questeros, Zara, Zastrid, uh, Oskins, Ishari, Esmor, and Scarlet Heights. And with ND, &D there is a lot of different races or classes, backgrounds you can come from. And I decided for my first world, and when I run my first game, I don't want to limit the player. I want to be a very open like DM, like if you want to play an Aarakocca, you can. Or if you want to play a Goblin, you can. I'm not going to say no because it doesn't fit into the world. So my idea was with um, Corsa was it was founded and it kind of became a safe haven for anyone and anyone could live here, basically, right? Um, that's kind of part of the history with that. We might finish going through the maps real quick. Um, I messed with multiple different ideas on how I want to break up the world or show uh, travel and scale. This is one of them. And this was the old world map I had, but I like changed it last weekend. I'm not even kidding. Um, this was the old world map, but I changed it. And... I still wanted the world to feel big, so if I open up my map paths for Corsa, it might be hard to tell, so I'll just zoom in a bit, but each hex I wanted as a day's worth of travel. And I determined that I did some research and it was uh, an average human can walk about 30, no, not, not 30, like 20 to 25 miles in a day. And that's with breaks and doing all that. So each one of these is 30 miles because in my mind, in a more fantasy setting and more travel, whatever, you know, um, is why I kind of went with the 30 for the scale. I don't have it on here because uh, I know my scale and yeah, 
Um, I, but everything basically stayed the same. I just put this hex grid on. We have swamps, jungles, uh, snow, winter, mountains, deserts. I always forget if these are um, mesas or badlands. I forget which one is Minecraft exclusive. Uh, savannas, volcanoes. So I wanted a big world. And if my math is correct, this should be like twice the size of the US, like from here to here. I don't know if that's correct though. Let's see. What, what, what other maps did I have I worked on? Um, so here are the current Corsa ones. Uh, I found a YouTube video. Incarnate has their own website for making way like making maps. And I was making realistic waves in this one because you can make simple maps pretty quick, but to get detail, you need to spend time. And I don't even know, I don't want to know how much time I've spent in this world alone. <laughs> Let's see. Some ships I made. Uh, encounter I have. The idea of continent placing that I never did, or world placing. This is a bear cave encounter I made. Let's see, yeah, it's a simple encounter. We can turn on the grid here to see the size. Little bear cave, pretty simple. Um, I haven't done many maps. Um, I still have this map, I wonder. Good. So when I started to make the new Primal Expanse, by the way, my, my world is called Primal Expanse. I don't think I ever... Uh, said that. <laughs> um, so the first thing I did was lay out where I wanted land masses, and then you can actually insert your own custom images in. Um, you can't like make land out of them, but it's like a, just like a image stamp, as like all these mountains are like stamps. Um, so I I just put Corsa where I wanted it, kind of scaled it to what I wanted the world to be scaled at, and built the rest. The next thing I did was put mountain ranges in before any land coloration. Um, like over here, I have like three distinct mountain ranges. I count this as one, and I'll explain why later. Um, then I I changed because in over here I have the black mountains for volcanoes, and I wanted some more volcanoes around the world. There's even one down here on its own little island. But then I went in and I filled up any of the color I wanted uh, according to this. Um, I'm not going to worry about specific like biome types. Uh, I'll put those in if I want them later. Not on the maps, but in the actual story. But the main ones I wanted to hit was snow and ice. So it's just snow and ice. Um, like pine trees, because those are like more year round. Like normal forest trees. Um, which will be in the plains, which is the light green. We have jungle, which is this color. I think I changed it at a later date slightly. Maybe it was a swamp, but we have swamp. Uh, we have savanna, the mesa, and desert. And those are like the big ones I kind of thought of while making Corsa. Then I went through and blended everything together. Um, you can just tell the difference in like the blending. It just looks a lot smoother and less sharp. Then I went in and added trees, stamps, everything else. And that is not even the final one. This is the final one. I don't think that last one had water in it. Um, but then I wanted to break this off. And this is kind of where I am, like I was working on this earlier earlier today, um, but by I wanted to break it off by um, continents, and that's, I have 10, um, but then I broke it off by regions of like where actual like civilization is, or anything like that then within each region would be kingdoms that rule over certain lands or fight for that region in a sense. And I came up with this. 
Um, it's very messy. So here's my current version that I uh, have. I am still working on kingdom names. I kind of gave up after after doing this because I'm still working up here. <laughs> I have a lot to do up here still. And I don't want to start explaining out here. Um, but what I want to do in the future is really have a origin for all like various races and stuff. Because in Corsa, uh, you can just pick a race and it's 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 there, you know? But in other parts of the world, like in Allgard, there'll be more humanoids, like goblin, like goblins, hobgoblins, bugbears are going to be seen as threats and enemies in Allgard. I already know that. And Allgard, I was thinking about naming the Axe Coast, but it's too, like, I know it's very similar to the Sword Coast. And it kind of looks like an axe, but I went with all guard instead. Um, yeah, and I have my various color coordination up here for now. Uh, this is definitely not the final form of this map at all. I, I still have a lot to do on this map. But I guess that kind of brings me to my main folder of organization. I've changed this maybe 12 times over the last few years and I this is this is the current version and it was changed three days ago um so in this first one I have my primal expanse stuff and like this right here is just me checking that I don't say anything twice basically like if I if I had two of these it notify hey you already have this name being used so my printer is going off. I hate that. Um, the Fallen campaign is a campaign I was a part of, but the DM had to leave. I have various templates and formats in here, like a simple city structure for, well, we'll see in, in, in a little bit. Um, I wanted to be strict with my districts, and I've actually added a few since then. I have a huge mound of paperwork next to me to go through. I've added a train yard. Because there are trains in my world. I don't know how much of the history we will get into. Blank pages. I'm oh yeah, okay, yeah. I know what that is. It will it opened up on my other screen. Um and part of my DM style is I want to do more paper. Um like Instead of using like D and D Beyond, like is a great site. Don't get me wrong, but I have all physical books, and it's I don't want to spend all day typing in stuff from the books in the program and try and make it work. And I'm not going to buy the books again on D and D Beyond. Um, so I actually made my own character sheets because I also disagreed with, uh the normal ones because I felt like you don't need some of the information on there. So here is like a fighter one I made. So we still have like the skills, saving throws, uh, your, everything that you need in a sense. But I also went through and for the base class, no subclasses, added all your action surges, indomitable, indomitables, number of attacks, um, everything. Right. And then with each class, I plan to make custom sheets from there. Like, oh, you have this thing. Oh, let me like, copy and alter something else for here for that, you know? Um, and I did that with all of them. Like, here's a paladin one. Because with paladins, you have prepared spells for, from your oath and. I put what level you what level they are or like depending on the level spell slots your divine sense charges cleansing touches everything we need for that and let's go look at a uh the warlock's a bad example but of, of a proper uh magic user Like, here is a spell sheet. 
a little bit more simple, but let's go look at like this one. We can see the spell slots, sorcery points, and the and like I can unlock more sorcery points as you level up. I have more information here for sorcerers. Like if you create a first level spell, you need two sorcery points. And then that is that. Random shop tables. I haven't done much with this yet. Like literally, they are our, they are blank. Um, quest and encounter stuff. That's just ideas I have. Player characters for miscellaneous characters I've made with. And that's messy. Um, I don't know what this is. I haven't looked at looked in this file in a long time. I have a old and temporary file for. Uh, this old stuff like the old Primal Expanse map I don't want to necessarily get rid of it right now in case I still need it uh, this is interesting my old player stat calculation is in here I'll get to that in a bit miscellaneous stuff uh, various like decked out D&D from the Hermitcraft server uh, item cards, I kind of wanted to maybe mess with those one day. I bought the Steinhardt uh, Guide to Eldr Eldridge Hunt uh, Kick Fund. fund. Yeah, the Kickstarter. The Fool's Gold campaign. It's a bunch of cool stuff. Homebrew stuff. Let's go look at races and classes. So we have a null tiefling. This was from a picture. This is my own custom race. This is a dragonkin. And basically they're created through mutation of magic and alchemy. Um, you can read that if you want. Uh, but basically it's like half dragon, half human, but not a dragonborn. Like you still look human, but you might have a arm that is dragon like a dragon arm like bigger scaled claws um or you might have half of your head be covered in scales um but this was actually for the what was it for the fallen campaign i, I couldn't remember the name it was for the fallen campaign i made a race for that um Live longer than humans, any alignment. Uh, you only increase one ability score. You have 35 feet of uh, movement. Uh, you know, common and, dr uh, and draconic, and you can choose one. But what, what I wanted to do with this race is, if you wanted to be half elf, you still could. Um, and you would get that, like, the elf language, but you would still look like an elf. You don't get any other elf uh, features. Uh, I, I want a dark vision as a human, <laughs> and then I wanted a, a a feat. So I want it to be. Where is it? Oh wow, the main thing I that is also important on here is not on here. Um, you also get to choose one of the things, one of the um dragon type uh, breath weapons to be resistant to. That is not on here. Let me write that on a sticky note right now. Dragon can no existence at the moment on homebrew. Yeah, we can. We might jump over to D and D Beyond and look at that on there because it is on there. I did not even look at the last one. Um, various monsters I've looked at before and various like pictures. Well, it's not on there, but uh, when Cocaine Bear came out, I actually saw a Cocaine Bear D&D stat and I just made it into a, a nicer style for me, basically. Um, game stuff we have. I one day I decided to just sit down and I was like, you know what? Let me 
it shouldn't be it's it's not too hard to make some gods. It was a lot harder. I have 30 here. 18 of them are what I'm calling prime gods from critical role. <laughs> Um, but the other bad gods, they are the fallen gods. Uh, there's 12 of those. So my calendar, uh, I got some of the names from other D&D videos I've seen over the years. Um, holidays as well. Uh, I saw a three moon rotation chart and I was like, ooh, I want two moons. <laughs> And this was actually before I started to watch Critical Role 2, so it's not inspired by the Critical Role 2 moons. Um, but I, I, I made this in Publisher. Uh, as you, you can see, I can move the parts. <laughs> um, and then with mine, I wanted to make any uh, lycanthropy like werewolves and stuff more challenging in a sense so that's where i came up with these various rules and like when there's two full moons it's like the dual full moon um it just makes it harder various rules and talking about stuff i have mithril in my world but in in my world it is uh only found in volcanic regions and needs to be melted in lava to melt properly. Lycanthropy here. And then these are all the house rules I've kind of gathered over the years. And my plan is like I'll I'll select a few of these that I will choose no matter what. Like uh like key points, for example. Um I want to give any monks just a little bit extra boost in a sense. So, and it's equal to level plus level plus your wisdom modifier, or just give them a few extra. Um, like throwable po potions from uh, Baldur's Gate. Um, what are the ones do I have? Some of these are actually from Baldur's Gate. Like spell casting, you can cast a cantrip can be cast as an action or bonus action. So if you had a bonus action spell but no action cantrips, which might be in like not correct at all, but to avoid any confusion, you can cast a spell and a cantrip as either an action or bonus action, no matter what it says. Just make it, just make magic users do a little bit more magic. <laughs> Um, I will be using this ability score generation. So it's a 17, 15, 13, 12, 10, and 8. Um, just to give a little bit more freedom down the line if people wanted uh, to choose feats over... Um, what is it? Uh, like feats over the ability score improvement. Chip stats and weapons. That's... Various stats I got from a online document, which I have somewhere. Uh, I don't take credit for making that on my own. Uh, when I watch Stranger Things, I want to make it upside down. I'm waiting for a physical copy of Seinhardt's Eldridge Guide to Eldridge Guide Hunt thing. I already forgot the name, but that's where I want to get some monster inspiration from. Uh, Family D and D game that has been waiting to be played for a year now. <laughs> um, yeah, let's take a quick dive into the Excel stuff I made. I'm very good at Excel, so I challenge myself. This is not a good example of that. Uh, just messing with ideas here, trying to see when full moons will happen or new moons on the same days. Printers going again. Uh, Kingdom Cities. Let's see what this is. Okay. I don't know why that's half a picture. There it is. Uh, in Corsa, we have a seven hour time, like seven time zones. <laughs> in the Primal Exams, we have 40 or 41 almost. Um, I just chalk it up to 40 to be easier. 
Uh, this is my district and level check, so I don't name anything multiple times. We have my various castles here, levels, and cities. That will be more clear in a second. And then district names, and then all of the cities I have in Corsa, along with population estimates. Corsa NPCs. Um, Firstly, here's my shops. I made these printable because I might just get the names. I was thinking about printer. What are you doing? Uh, I was thinking about literally taking all of these or like all 20 of these, I should say, and making a unique individual store for all of them. But then I decided not to. So I did it this way. <laughs> uh, taverns. This is just to check. I don't have multiple of the same ones and i have about 70 hidden cells right here actually 80 and then we have the big one here of names and i just have a simple uh like name what their occupation is name of place city or town what kingdom it is i don't know why never mind i know why um race male or female and then any miscellaneous information like a tiefling what color or like a Genasi, is it air, water, earth, dragonborn, what color scales, stuff like that. Um, and up here I have percentages of, I was, I was generally curious because I don't want to over, uh, I don't actually know how to put this into words. Um, I, I was just curious on what the population would look like overall. And it is, normal like we have 18 percent human about five percent dwarf a little bit more elf or our half elf um like some of these i won't do that's not right i have a satyr interesting yeah that, I, I i do know i have one of those somewhere i don't know why it's not showing up here Hmm. Is this? No, it's still there. Interesting. Okay. I don't know why that's not like that. Um. I have some of these NAs for various reasons. I have a dragon and a panda. Um. Yeah. So that is my NPC file. I'm going to save that one for last, in this file at least. Shop file. Uh, I have an exchange rate. I don't have much in this. Um, but I did watch a video. Like a potion of invisibility is rare. So like have like a minimum. Whereas a cloak of protection is uncommon. But I, I actually don't know what this is talking about anymore. Because I feel like a potion... You know, I'm going to change this um, because I was watching a video and they were saying there would more, most likely be more potions of invisibility than cloak of protections in any given shop or store location. But the price difference is kind of crazy, you know? So ignore that. I need to change that. Then like my master file of honestly everything from... <laughs> the what I don't know if it's a player's handbook or the DM's guide. Um, I have that in here, so I can legit if they say if the players want a uh, they want to go find an ar uh, arcane shop, I can sort it by arcane shop and see everything in the arcane shop. And I have various information up here. This was just for a easier reference. Uh, of all the various books where I have it from just kind of so I know where it is um, I printed this off so printer what are you doing same thing with the classes because instead of trying to pile through all the books or look stuff up I was like you know what I can I want a file I can open up and talk to the players with oh you want to do this 
uh which one of these like oh you want to play a bard which one of these looks good oh do you want to see what that adventures one is let me go grab that book real quick you know because this is a lot of books to try and have on the off chance they want to go with something else you know uh class features i'm working on making my own uh more of my own custom classes this time uh the ones i have are from like critical role or ones i've gotten off the internet i don't know what this is if i'm being honest i looked at it earlier i couldn't tell what i was trying to tell here maybe just information at of each class but i'm not sure like we have spells here you know And then this is where I plan to put information from my maps. Like, oh yeah, the dwarves, they can come from here, 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 and here. And in the future, not anytime soon, I do want uh, additional bonuses based on where your character is from. So if you're from, let me open up the Primal Expanse map, for example. So if you're from... Let's say Krill over here. Oh, that's too far. Too much zoomed in. Like you might get a. Like you already are. Proficient in X skill or skill X increases because of you're from Krill, you know, because you're like used to the hot jungles. Maybe your survival is up one. Like you get a plus one to survival already without making characters yet, you know. And I printed this with a simple descriptions of some of the ones uh, I might forget about, like hollowed one. What's that again? Instead of trying to go and look it up. Um, and now my favorite thing here <laughs> is my character sheet. I this is the second one I made, and this is literally to get this green information right here easier i don't think you can actually hear the printer i just looked over um so you would select whichever stats you wanted you will select this was the longest part what race you want to be let's say if we want to be a uh, a high elf we see this right here i'm sorry this right here changes because down here for high elf we get a plus two dexterity and plus one for intelligence and that that gets brought up automatically from this formula i love my excel formulas i wonder uh no i don't have it on here i, ma I made a custom formula of a month or two ago um so then you would choose whatever background you want so let's say you want to be a charlatan and you want to be a fighter it would change a bunch of other stuff from uh, saving throw proficiencies it tells which one you are like i think we chose monk we chose fighter so we'd automatically get the proficiencies and these just equals your proficiency bonus because that does increase as you level up it automatically selects your very first class um because this just equals this over here and then a nice big complicated formula right here nice formula there too and here's where we have uh the backgrounds and this is expandable so we can expand like this is how much i have built into the formulas currently and if i want to add a custom one i can or if a player had a good idea that i wanted to implement i can add that there here is when we choose a uh a class like we chose fighter so we'll come down to the fighter above us tells us how many skills we need to choose so we might just do acrobatics and intimidation and then over here it implements stuff from the background and the class and if for example uh we chose deception even though it's not one of ours but it still technically counts 
our check will light up here saying, hey, you can't do this, you know? And then this is expertise. I know some items or classes like the rogue will gain expertise. And I just do that and it brings it over here and adds it overall. Down here we have uh, any additional increases, like any feats, like if you take the alert feat, you will have, I know this isn't the alert feat, um, but like the alert feat gives you a plus five to initiative. So I would put that down here and just come up here to the initiative and do like a plus, or I wouldn't do that. I would do plus whatever is down here. So I know where exactly it's coming from. But we also get the gold piece start if we want to do a gold piece uh, instead of uh, items. All this should be automatically filled out too. Base information over here. I have an armor class sheet right here. This is a long video. <laughs> um, I don't think I'll cut this video up at all. I've been kind of talking the whole time. But this calculates your armor automatically which is super nice i know armor is not the complicated thing like if we wanted like unarmored defense we can do that shields we can do that um so anything in yellow we need to alter or change in the future and whenever someone chooses one of the races down here like from the monsters of the multiverse uh, we will need to come down here and put these skills in because in that book it's like choose whatever skills you want uh, ability score increases I have built in and rogue and fighter only because they get additional ones as well as at those levels um yeah that's my favorite sheet right there and it works out really nice and I'm not even at the main part of what I am wanting to talk about uh so we have my continent folder with all the 10 continents. And let's jump over to the course because it's actually the only one I have stuff in. And this is like where my maps are, uh, a checklist I made. And let's just jump into the kingdoms. And then we can see all my kingdoms here. This is a blank template page. Um, these, there's nothing in these yet, but if we jump into the quest rows, these are all of the cities and towns i've actually and forts i've worked on but let's jump over down to wouldn't go the capital of uh, uh of questeros so i have a description of the city the ruling faction slash party and because he's a king he has the golden board that kind of rules over the city um any districts in that city or town uh like a market district or high end housing uh, high end housing districts moderate housing farming and then we have taverns inns and etc a simple price calculation up here if i need it um then a description of the inn and who works there and here's that again and then this is a separate piece on on this side this is a tavern in npc descriptions on my processing and thinking was it's kind of always going to happen when a party enters a town they're going to go to an inn and instead of trying to make up stuff on the spot um why not do it in advance and the reason why i have so many inns is to give choice and options instead of saying oh yeah you go to this one inn like if they wanted to go to the mixed leaf which is in the eagle fields which is on the outskirts of the inner wall um they can or if they wanted to go to the wet turtle they could or the exotic angel just more choice you know um then i have simple quick descriptions nothing else for the people there more of that a little bit more and then shops so i'm going to just assume in a big city they have everything <laughs> from jewelry to magic to everything. And this is where I would put descriptions, uh, any POIs like this is the wrong size. 
Um, but I, in my family D&D game, there's a place called the Grayside Manor, and this is where I would put information about it. And there's also the Nightfall Arena, which is where the King's Champion takes place. Um, and any other NPC descriptions I might need, like outside of taverns. And that's like, here's like full bore. This is a town, so it's a little bit simplified. Uh, smaller description, there isn't a leader of full board, so this is a different example. I unlined all the shops in full bore, so they have sables, music, general store, black market, an arcane shop, and adventuring supplies. And I kind of just chose those from what I kind of felt like the city would have. Let's go look at Melding. Melding is probably my favorite city at the moment. Only because it is a completely underground city. And I'm still working on stuff here. Um, but it has levels. Questeros did have levels, but it was more consecutive. This has nine levels of the city, so like full on different levels of stuff. And each level has its own districts for the most part. Um, but if we open up, let me just go through my ever expanding filing system. Uh, melding is right here on volcanoes. But because of that, they have mithril, mending mithril. And I go, I talk about it more here. Um, And that's one of the secrets about melding is each because it's a nine leveled city. There's a entrance to each of the nine levels of hell in mending, not yeah, in not mending and melding. Just one of the cool ideas I had one day. I decided to implement it. We have city districts, and as we can see, I don't have anything for taverns and inns yet or NPC descriptions. Uh, shops, obviously, all of them. So that is kind of everything I've done over the last two, two and a half years of stuff. I guess we can take a quick look at campaigns. I have not worked on any of the campaigns lately. Um, is this the old one? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, no, this is not the right one. Where is it? That's not it. Um, I created rough documentation for why I want, like I want to, I want, my idea is to make the campaigns read easier, like they are in the, in the, uh, like the ones you can buy, like, uh, Lost Minds of Felden Delver and the other ones, like the two columns, that's where my whole inspiration kind of came from. I have a, th I have one somewhere. Um, where is it? I, I know I have it. It might be in my old. Here it is. Yep. So this was my first go at making my own campaign, and I still will pull from it. Uh, and we can see all my grid lines here for spacing reasons. Um, but this was before I did a lot of alterations and everything else. Like I have the information, calendar, or this. Um, backgrounds, I was going to have custom backgrounds, but I changed my mind. I only have a handful of house rules here. Um, I gave descriptions. Like my spacing's off, like no, that's actually correct. It just looks big. Um, but like I have the chapters where they are, important information to read out, and a bunch of other stuff based on other stuff. Um, placements for stuff to help it easier. Uh, different ideas that can happen, and. Yeah, the various chapters. I only got to chapter two. Um, but yeah, that that my first campaign is going to be called King's Champion. And my idea with campaigns. Um, let me open up the 
or some map as we kind of do this last bit and outro. So if my idea for King's Champion, Cha King's Champion is I want to do a little bit of travel, but also city stuff. And my idea is only going to level the players up to about six, seven max. And the idea is they need to go to Little Ivy Wood to get one of three items. They could get all three if they wanted to. One of which, which is a false trick item. Um, but those are located around the town. And from there, they need to go to Black Hollow to do the mission they got from. I don't, I don't want to spoil too much in case if I end up recording it or talking about it in the future. Um, but then they get a, a quest from the king to go here and then here. They need to capture something here and bring it back. But there's going to be a complication. They lose the paperwork to get back inside. They need to get inside. Uh, they deliver it. There's a betrayal from someone. I'm not going to say who in the city. Um, and then from their choices, if they decide to side with the king or the traitor, will affect which next campaign they go into. Like, if they side with the... Oh my god. If they side with the king... He might give the players the option of go down to every yard and participate in the race around Corsa, which is this whole other campaign, which in game lasts a year. You just travel around various locations, or they can go all the way down to Broxwood to do a competition of all the contests of Slayers. But let's just say they decide to side with the traitor. They can have three different campaigns from that. They can be, ooh, what is it? Uh, where is it? Uh, they can be hunted, which is where they're in Questero still, because they would have killed the king. Um, so if they're hunted, they're gonna be in Questero still, but on like high alert and highly wanted. Um. Let me see. Then they could be banished, or they escape to sea, and they could go anywhere else in the continent in, in Corsa. Because if they wanted to go to Ashari and go to the capital of Lynn, I have that city prepared already. Like, not I have to like transfer it as I call it, but I have the description and everything that's already going to be in it. I just have to we just like make it look nicer like the other cities i have but i have all the information already for that um and that will be its own campaign that of being of like clearing the name or whatever or if they get caught they are going to uh, up here to the black keep fortress which is where a giant prison is and then they have stuff to do there so i have a lot of ideas brewing and uh what i want to do um i think i'm going to call that an episode it's a lot longer than i thought it would be um i did kind of ramble on the maps for a while in the first portion of the episode i might have broken this up into two episodes we will see what i feel like during editing um but if you enjoyed and would like to know more about various places in the world or more of the history, um, because Corsa was once a whole continent and it was not broken up like it is. Um, but if you just want to know more information or anything like that, leave a like, drop a comment. I uh, very much appreciate it. Um, I do want to actually maybe turn this more into a D&D channel. Uh, and video game channel still and just have that or I might I do have an idea for a different channel but I don't want to switch between YouTube accounts honestly um whenever I want to do stuff um yeah I'll just see what where this kind of leads but I hope you guys enjoyed I know it was very paperwork heavy because that is what my life has been like just building this world basically a lot of paperwork but 
um i hope you i hope it made sense i hope you guys enjoyed learning more about my thought process and the world i made and i'll see you guys in the next episode thank you for watching